Good morning, traders and investors. My name is Roger Scott, and I'm the senior strategist for WealthPress. Today is Thursday. It's September 1st. It's about 8.28 in the morning. I'm doing the report a little later per requests from you guys. And if you're benefiting from these videos, if you're liking these videos, post comments below the YouTube in the YouTube channel. It doesn't cost anything, and it doesn't hurt anything. And give me some feedback so I can improve these videos. Anyway, let's get started. We've got a big, big, juicy jobless claims report and productivity costs. Um, they're coming out in about a minute. Hopefully, before we get to the end of this video, we'll get to see how much this is impacting the market. But I do like doing these videos a little later because I kind of like seeing the reaction of these news reports as they come out, if you want me to be truthful with you. Um, as you can see here, the Dow's down about 130. The Nasdaq is down about 88. September uh, S&P futures are down in between meeting us halfway. I would typically say this is a big move, but based on the moves we've been having recently, I think the average move in the Dow now per day is about 400 points. We'll actually get into that in a bit. But there's a few things I need you guys to pay attention to, and this is really, really important. Number one, and, and when we do the analysis, it'll all make sense. Look at the bond market. You see where it is? Remember what I was telling you this whole time? We, if As long as we stay in this channel, we'll be okay. If we start breaking lower, we're going to be in deep doo-doo because that's going to put more pressure on tech stocks. Now, the question is, are we going to break lower or are we going to bounce like we came up here? My, my consensus, based on what I'm seeing right now, is that we're going to break just a hair lower, uh, trigger uh, a massive... Uh, uh, fearful selling pressure and then we'll come back into the channel I don't think there's enough news and data right now to cause the bond market to go much lower than it is right now but we are at a very very crucial junction but let me show you why let me show you why I believe that we're gonna go back up instead of coming back down um, and and continue moving sideways for the most part maybe maybe gain slight slight edge to the downside but for the most part remain choppy and not continue this type of market action if you look at the dow jones and this is pretty i'm going to say i'm going to tell you guys this is premium analysis what i'm going to do for you right now this is the volatility this is the atr of the market now notice notice every time we go down like this is a perfect example we go down right look at volatility it increases right you see that look we're going down volatility really really increases let me show you again we go down what has happens every time we go down volatility increases this is the atr this is volatility now i want to show you something that's happening right now we're going down right is volatility increasing it's not is it so i'm going to show you again we go down as we go down look at this line and see if it's going up or down so look we're going down 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 the line is going up right we're going down 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 See, this is going up, down, 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 down. It's going up, down, 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 down. It's going up. You can do it over and over and over again. It's definitely going up here. And again, same thing here. Every time it goes down, volatility goes up. This time it's a little different. Noticing volatility looks like it's, it's, it's looks like it doesn't want to go higher. And at the same time, price level is oversold and and we're back into that range that i've been telling you guys that we were going to hit as we were going to hit the 200 day moving average i told you we we're going to back up here so do i think we're going to go down a lot more no we may come down just a little bit more like a hair more but i don't think we're um i don't think this is going to be a big downside and again because of the bond market and because of where the bond market is right now in relationship to volatility in the stock market and this is a three-dimensional analysis, but I want you guys to understand this is really, really, really important. Now, before I get to uh, further, let's see. Markets are holding on. Let's see what the jobless claims is and see if it's out already. I like doing the, these in real time. They're kind of fun because we get to see the same thing at the same time. So while this is kind of spinning around, let me go through global analysis, and then we'll pick up will pick up from there so global shares were lower thursday tracking a broad slide on wall street due to the bond market going down which means interest rates are going up or the the sentiment is going up as investors brace for higher rates and inflation worries for some time nikkei japan the slide in nikkei came despite signs of improvement in the japanese economy a study by finance ministry 
of corporate finance for the last quarter set showed a 17.6 percent improvement from the same period that's really good because we all know what last year was about it's about COVID and all those other things let me mute my my uh, phone all of a sudden it get it gets very very chirpy this time in the morning when I'm doing my morning video now the latest pullback from stocks came as treasury yields rose broadly that's what I'm talking about now bonds going this bonds going down increases the treasury yield remember they're inverse to each other so the yield on the 10-year which influences interest rates on mortgages and other consumer loans rose from to 3.17 from 311 that's that bond market going down bond yields have been rising along with expectations of higher rates while the federal reserve has been increasing a bit to squash higher inflation in decades highest inflation in decades this is what they're talking about right here right here this little little blip right here that we're, we're at right now again i'm trying to give you a three-dimensional perspective of everything so you guys could see exactly where we stand and what's going on here uh latest time the last time stock mounted a big rally was in june and early august when bond yields came off their highs as expectations of higher rates eased i have no idea why i i interest high interest rates also hurt investment prices especially for pricier stocks such as technology companies traders are now trying to get a better sense of how far and how quickly the fed rate hikes will go the fed has already raised interest rates four times and they're again expecting to do 0.75 now let's look at the jobless report all right the number <clears throat> the number was right in line below the ex below the uh estimate the, below the four-week moving average so it's a no-brainer now what about productivity and costs let's just see how that goes and again i like to look at these numbers let's see here productivity non-farm productivity annual rate 4.1 4 eh, consensus four negative 4.4 so the number wasn't that bad unit labor cost was also a little bit lower so it, it, the numbers were not like out of whack by any stretch of the imagination and the, the stock market is not declining based on that data it's actually firming up a bit so i'm glad i was able to do this with you in real time pretty cool right so first of all remember and again this this episode should be called i hate I, I hate to say i told you so but remember when i said when this was all green 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 and i said it's going to look a lot like this well you notice there's a lot more red and a lot less green here but notice energy utilities even consumer staples look 48 39 i mean holding on a lot better but look at consumer discretionary this was 97 percentile 45 percentile this was 23 percent it's 14 percent and that's one of the reasons why i think a lot of these stocks are almost done going down because the 50 day is starting to look miraculously a lot more like the 200 day which tells me that if we are going to break a little lower maybe from 31,300 down to 30, maybe another thousand points in the Dow. But I'm very, very encouraged by the fact that volatility is not rising. It's also kind of interesting, but we haven't seen the VIX rise very much either. Uh, we have puts right now, but I'm not seeing a lot of rise. We may have to get rid of these puts because I'm just not seeing the kind of spike in volatility I was expecting. But uh, the worst may still be in front of us right now what you need to pay attention to more than anything is the bond market and see if the bond market starts breaking lower if the bond market starts breaking lower here that's going to put more pressure on the stock market if the bond market stays steady and starts coming back up here that's going to put less pressure on stocks and volatility will happen in consumer discretionary info technology and communication services but notice communication services only 27 percent of stocks are trading above the 200-day moving average uh, information tech 30 percent uh, consumer discretionary 45 percent and the big question right now with consumer discretionary i'm going to tell you where the big big question is is here let me show you notice it's also breaking lower and i said if this breaks lower the market's going to put a lot of pressure on the market it looks like it's putting it in but it doesn't look like it's going to go all the way down it looks like it's almost done going down so we got to be very cautious and keep an eye right now on the bond market really really important that you keep your eye on the bond market and and keep your eye on volatility volatility if volatility starts going higher and if the bond market starts breaking down that means bearish stocks if volatility starts cooling back down and if bonds starts rising again 
then we're going to get some relief from these stocks and these numbers are going to start looking greenish again. But if not, if we're going to continue this, they're going to start looking a lot more redder. They're going to go from purple to red, which I think there's a little bit more of that on the table. But again, I'm really encouraged by energies and utilities right now, and I like those sectors quite a bit. Folks, it's still time to be defensive. Now, today happens to be Thursday, and on Thursday, I always give you the strongest sector, strongest, um, strongest option. It's utilities right now. And you know what? Look at utilities. 90% are trading above the 200-day moving average. 88 are trading above the 50-day moving average. And if we look down here, if you look at utilities, there, let me just, if you look at the chart, oops, wrong, wrong chart. If you look at the utilities, they're pulling back quite nicely, actually. And, and they're almost at the 50-day moving average. And I think the worst for utilities is almost behind us. And I would start looking. I would really, really, really start looking right now. Um, or energy. Energy is another one. Here's another one. Let's see which one I like better, actually. Yeah, I kind of like, I kind of like, uh, I kind of like utilities better. And with the market cooling off a little bit, there's some options that are not too expensive. And you may want to wait another couple of days on this. But um, I'd go for December, and I would go for, we're at 74, I would go for the 75s. I mean, there's plenty plenty of, or even 76. You can probably get these somewhere between 275 and 250 if you, if you bid on them. And I mean, you got all the way till December. And again, look at how stable, look at, look at how stable um, the sector is in terms of, the, of its foundational bias. Here, let me just go there. Here we go. You could see here, look at that. 200-day moving average, 90% of stocks, 86% of stocks. You want to be in sectors that have a very strong foundation for the averages. So I do like these sectors. Now, if you want to be a bottom picker right now, I'm going to tell you where to be the bottom picker right now. Real estate, XLRE. This sector looks like it's way, way overdone. And uh, again, if you want to buy puts on it, I think we may go down a little bit more. So as far as weakness is concerned, real estate, it's got a little bit more to go. And here, the puts on it, we're trading at 41. You can get the 40, oh wow, they're, they're not expensive. They don't have a lot of liquidity here. Let's see, 11, here we go. Yeah, there we go, you got a lot of liquidity here. You can do these for a couple of dollars. Just wait for the market to open and start bidding, but you could do these for a couple of dollars. They're not that expensive. All right, before I let you go, and boy, oh boy, we've got a lot to talk about today. Folks, as you may have heard already, I've teamed up with Jack Carter. He's got over 35 years of trading experience, and we set to develop a new system. We even went live earlier this week, that's right, and gave away the details of the system. Now, if you missed it, then you seriously do not want to miss today's training session at 1 p.m. Eastern time. But even if you did attend our first session, you really should go. For the first time ever, we're revealing the tickers in our S3 Advantage watch list. You guys do not want to miss out. Follow the link below. Jack Carter, people love Jack. He's, he's the lovable Jack. Um, I don't know how lovable I am, but I've been getting some pretty good feedback. <laughs> Follow the link below, check it out, and post some comments, feedback. I haven't heard from you in a while. Bye, guys. Take care. Have a great, great day, and I'll see you on the other side. Watch that bond market. Watch that bond market very, very carefully right now. It may break. Bye, guys.